morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Um, today, I'm talking to Section A2 and A4. So hopefully this has become a routine for you all now. We are in the Academic Writing Partnerships working together. Everyone is required to join us if they're at home. So hopefully that connection has been made. If it, there's a problem, let me know. The homework is to do section five, which is now taking us to page 206. It's doing the bookmark section for five and also the post-it notes. And hopefully after you did peel one, you began to see the types of things that you would want to post-it note and maybe have looked at the leading questions to kind of front load what types of, uh, of evidence you might be looking for from the diary. So you're going to take the Socrative quiz. It's open and ready for you. Um, and most of you have been doing really well on that. If you haven't, I've let you know. Then you're going to be doing the visible thinking bookmark. You'll do section five today. So, oh, sorry, not section five, section four, the color symbol image. So in this section, if you had to symbolize, what would you do in these three areas? And then one takeaway. So now your bookmark you're seeing is important. You're going to turn it in as a, as a um, showcase of thinking that you did while you read the, the diary. Okay, so after you do that, and that shouldn't take more than 10 minutes, um, you should review my feedback that I gave to you on Peel 1. So I gave it to the person who was listed first in the Academic Writing Partnerships. So that person can share it with his or her partner. Um, and it looks like this. There's comments on the side. And, um, and so I don't want you to resolve these, but I gave some compliments, but I mostly focus on areas of weakness or things that I felt could be better. This person, the, they received a lot of comments. Their paragraph is pretty long. Um, and then they've gone on to do PL2, which is what you're going to work on today. They use the template, which is great. And, um, and what they're trying to do is take the feedback I gave them on their weak spots and things also that I liked that they were doing, and they're going to fix the weak spots, and they'll continue to do the things that I thought were strong here in Peel 2. Peel 2 is tricky. They did, it looks like they did a pretty good job yesterday, or now it's not they, it's he, um, because you only have 45 minutes, and you're going to find that that is part of the exercise that will now become really tricky. Um, doing 40, a 45 minute write on an unknown topic, you have the topics, but I bet a lot of you haven't, haven't looked at them. Um, that's tricky. Two pieces of evidence that you need to research. So you shouldn't do that at home. You should just try to really focus and do it as quickly as you can in the 45 minutes. It's kind of like training and you will hopefully, sorry, my kitten is going crazy right now, but you'll hopefully get better at it. it. You'll get faster at it. You'll begin to strategize and figure out things to, um, to make yourself be able to write faster. Um, so you're going to complete peel number two. And there are two topics. One is about the title of Anne's diary, which was changed. So it's right here. Um, and it talks about how Anne wanted a different title. She didn't want it to be called the diary of a young girl. But they changed it. Um, in the diary, Anne talks about the title she wants, which is The Secret Annex. And the publishing company changed it. Um, what do you think about the fact that the publishing company changed it? Is it a better title? When you think about publishing and titles of texts, especially a text that is this emotionally charged and this important, um, the title means a lot. Um, it can be a real turnoff to readers. It can be something exciting and make people want to read it. So I'd like you to write on whether the title change was, um, was a good decision or not, and also what Anne would have thought of the new title. Um, the other thing is, the second one is a little bit political. It's about um, Adolf Hitler's uh, manifesto. It's called Mein Kampf. And there's some background here. Some kids don't know much about it, and that's fine. You'll learn a lot about it, I think, next year. But it's his book, the book that he um, dictated while he was in prison and has become um, incredibly famous because of the power that these words had on the world. So um, after World War II, the book was um, illegal to be published in Germany. 
in 2016, and I think it continues as far as I know, the government decided that it could be republished in Germany. And so is this an ethical choice? Um, this, this argument, um, you, might, you might remember about three weeks ago, there was a shooting um, in Germany, um, a really unfortunate shooting. I forget how many people were killed, five, maybe more. Um, it was racially motivated. There's also some, um, some evidence of neo-Nazi um, organizations on the rise in Germany. Um, there's also a political party that is seen as quite conservative on the rise there. So I think this argument here, if you decide to choose this one, is whether, uh, whether the government should control what is read by its people. It's sort of like a free speech, freedom of the press argument versus maybe the greater good argument. Maybe it's just not ethical for people to have access to this book. So you can think about it. You also might know that Mein Kampf is available online. So if you search, it actually comes up. It's, it's, it's there published online. So you, anyway, you can, you can come up with your point here. But yes, you have to have a citation from the diary and also one from an outside source. The citation from the diary, again, really sets, the, sets students apart because some of you will know the diary quite well and be able to find passages that will support your argument even on Germany republishing Mein Kampf or this issue of the title um, being changed. And some of you just won't know the diary quite as well. So just know that knowing the diary will really, really help you because you always need something from the diary and something from outside to support your argument. And the last thing um, on that, some kids have asked, can I have two pieces of evidence um, from the diary? And you can always have more evidence. You just can't have less. You have to have something from the diary and something from the outside, but you can have more than one in each category. Other kids have asked, um, can I sort of take a point that's in between, um, not sort of say, well, I, this is sort of true, but it's also sort of not true. And I would say, don't do that. Take a position. And then if you want to talk about what the other side might say, do that in the analysis section as what's called a counter claim or a counter argument. So if you really want to bring in the other point of view, do it there. It works really well in the A section, one of your A sections. Um, I want to tell you, uh, give you some tips on the P and the E before I leave you today, things that I'm noticing kids are not doing um, quite well. So um, the first thing is some of you are assuming that we know things um, that the reader may or may not know. Who is Anne Frank? What diary are you talking about? In your P, you should always put in details to make sure that the reader need not read the question or know anything about what you're talking about. It should be really clear and it should stand alone. So check that and make sure. Um, in your point, you can copy paste or reword things, which a lot of kids find really helpful. So for instance, you have this digitally. If there's a section that you really like here, you can copy paste and then rearrange this and then take your position in the point. So it saves you a lot of time, especially if I've given you a lot of background on Mein Kampf. You can use anything that I've given you as long as you reword it and make it your own for your point. So I wanted to tell you that. I also wanted to tell you um, that I would like one to two strong word choices in your P to show expertise for the reader that you are a voice that should be listened to. So very few people did that, and I would like everybody to try to do that this time. Um, I think we looked at the student sample. Let's look here. Oh, yeah, the citations. I'm actually going to send you this because it's really helpful to see it. So just so you know, when you do an MLA in-text citation from a book, and in this case it's from the diary, I always want a colon before the quote. I don't want a comma, and I don't want nothing unless the quote's been integrated into the sentence. For most of you, you will not integrate it yet. Um, that's something in high school they'll talk to you a lot about. For our purposes, just stick with the colon here and then the quote, then you type in the quote as it's, as it's stated on the source or the, the diary. 
after the quote, it would have the last name of the author and the page number. And then you have the brackets, right? The full stop comes after. So a lot of you have the full stop or a comma inside the quote. In MLA format, you take that out and you put it here at the end. Okay, the only time you don't is if it's a question mark or an exclamation mark. If that's part of the quote here, it needs to stay because that kind of changes the quote if it's an exclamation or a question. But otherwise, you take it out and you just put the full stop here at the end to show that this is all connected. And then in a website, most people weren't quite sure how to do this. The website is the same. You just put the website name, the name of the website, not the URL, just the name of the website. So this, I said, was... Uh, Highly regarded website, the British Broadcasting Company states, colon, and then I'd have the quote, and then after I wrote BBC, and then the period comes after. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's a grammar thing, a mechanical thing, and it needs to be right. If it's not exactly like this, it's incorrect. So please just learn this and practice it so that you don't make this error, because this is just a technical error that everybody can learn how to do this properly. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, I want to lead up into these quotes. So don't just have your evidence be sitting there with nothing um, connecting it. So you always have a transition before the E, A, and L sections. But I also would like a little intro here, like Anne Frank writes midway through the diary, colon, or something like that. Um, so that it's not just like a list, but it's actually connected to the argument and it's really clear for the reader and it flows. Um, hopefully you have easy pib uh, or something like that as an extension in your Google Docs. It makes it really easy. I think Mr. Anderson had you guys do this in seventh grade. So hopefully you remember that. But at the end of the paragraphs, you are going to have a work cited here at the end. This one doesn't look quite right. These aren't quite right. But you will have the work cited in MLA format at the end here. So um, using EasyBib or something like that and keeping track of your sources and just pasting them below is a really great thing to do. So just start doing that now and make sure you have the definitive edition of the diary as part of that. Because in every single paragraph, you cite from that source. So have that source ready because you'll put it at the end of every single one of your paragraphs. So I think that's it. You've got the questions and again you've got 45 minutes to do this and so it's going to be tight and tricky. Um, you can wear your headphones while you do it. You're each doing your own but your partner is with you, sitting with you. In case you have questions feel free to ask him or her. If you're really stuck ask him or her. Otherwise, I'm going to be on the chat, guys, and so you can also ask me um, if you have a question. But I can't tell you how many kids yesterday were done with the 45 minutes and they realized they had barely even done their first piece of evidence. And they were in a panic at realizing how quickly they're going to have to work. And that is the exercise. We are moving into speed. So keep that in mind. Now, there are plenty of other kids that finished it early, which actually kind of shocked me, but it was amazing. They finished it early. Um, but you know you're kind of pacing as a writer, and the whole idea is to get better and better and better every time and then keep all of your comments here so that I can look at them and keep it as a record of how you grew and change, changed over time and you will get a good score if these errors that, for example, Louis was making, Louis and Alex, um, then over time they stopped making to the point where when you do peel eight, maybe there's almost nothing here to fix. It's only positive comments. All right, guys, that's it. I think I'm done, and uh, best of luck today, and I miss you, and I'll see you on Monday. Remember, I'm not sick. I'm just... Uh, I'm just staying home for the greater good of the ISA community. All the best.